hey, so I look like a mess. I've had hair. I apologize. And I'm sick, so my voice sounds a little weird. Thank I just wanted to film this because I think it's kind of important. Because um, I know that when I first found out about the situation, I know I would have liked a little more information on it from, you know, personal accounts. Um, this is about heartworm treatment and, you know, dogs and adopting a dog that has heartworm treatment. But, like, just in general, any dog, I guess, with heartworm treatment. My friend adopted my dog for me because at the time there was a situation where technically I wasn't able to. So I didn't know until he got in the car and was already adopted by her that he was heartworm positive. I didn't know anything about heartworms, heartworm treatment. I always thought that it just, if they got it, it killed them. That was pretty much it. It's not going to kill them, but you have to treat it. And it's a pretty hefty process to treat it, you know, um, it's better to just pay for preventative every month. So basically I'm going to give my, my personal knowledge based on my story and kind of do like a vlog as the process goes on so that by the end of his treatment and recovery, if anybody else is in my position and they're trying to do research on it and find somebody's personal story, then hopefully this will help because I know I would have liked more help about it. I had to ask a lot of vets a lot of questions and do a lot of research on my own. Heartworm disease is spread by mosquitoes. They carry the larva, I believe, of the heartworm. And when they bite the dog, they lay the eggs. And then the heartworms start to reproduce inside the heart. From what I was told by one of the vets is it takes, you have to, the dog has to have been infected with the disease for six months before it's even show as positive. So they found Dudley at the end of September of 2016. And as soon as they tested him, it was positive. So he had had it for at least six months already. So they gave him an antibiotic called doxycycline, I think it's, I believe it's called. It's an antibiotic that kills the bacteria living inside of the heartworms. So it kind of weakens them. And then after that, they started him on preventative, which seems like it defeats the purpose. But heartworm preventative medication kills the microphiliae. The, the baby heartworms, so, and then usually they're kept on that for a couple of months until it stabilizes, the baby heartworms are all dead, the bacteria inside the adult heartworms is dead, so you just have weak living adult heartworms, they're not able to reproduce anymore, because the bacteria inside them that allows them to reproduce is gone. The actual heartworm treatment is an injection series, and the medication is called imidacide. As of recently, I don't know how many years ago, but I believe still it's been on back order. There's a short supply of it, so it has to be imported from Europe. So that is one of the reasons why to get it done by a vet, it is so expensive because it has to be imported from Europe. And then it's like a pretty intensive um, procedure, not procedure, but um, they have to in, like use a really long needle, very deep muscles in the dog's back. There's two different kinds of treatment. There's a three step injection and there's a two step injection. Three step injection has a 98% success rate, um, but it does increase the length of recovery time by an extra month. The two step injection is 90% success rate and it's only a month for recovery. For the three step one, they get the shot and then 30 days later they return and then they get one shot and the next day another shot. So then there's the three and then it's you know, between the, the first 30 days shot and then after the, the second two, the other two, it's 60 days total of recovery. The two-step one is only 30 days recovery. So Dudley tomorrow is going to be getting his first shot and then Tuesday morning his second shot. The shelter I adopted him from is performing the treatment for free, which I believe any shelter should if they're allowing you to adopt a dog that has this disease because it's way too expensive for most people. But, you know, they only offer the two-step one, at least the shelter that I am I got him from. There is a slightly higher chance that it may not completely kill all the heartworms and he may not be heartworm free. Um, but, you know, 90% success rate, we're going to hope that it's fine. There's different phases of heartworm disease and it progresses the longer it's left untreated. As, um, symptoms start to become physical and you can see them. That's how you know it's getting worse. Um, Dudley, unless 
he had been tested, I would not know. He has heartworms. He doesn't cough. He doesn't wheeze. He does sleep a bit more than I thought, but that also could be part of his age. Um, some of the symptoms of when it starts to get bad is them coughing and getting extremely tired, you know, getting really skinny and anorexic because they start to lose weight, you know, are reluctant to exercise. They're eating happy. The recovery period is the hardest part of the treatment. You pretty much have to keep the dog confined for the month or the 60 days, however, whichever treatment you decide to end up going with. Very, very restricted exercise. No jumping on the bed, on the couch, no playing with other dogs, no playing at all. Only walking outside to use the bathroom and that's it. No like walks, no exercise that's going to get the heart pumping because the problem is, is the imidacide kills the worms over a period of days to weeks and they're, you know, they can get dislodged into the lungs and the dog can go into anaphylactic shock. Sounds terrifying, but if you follow the guidelines that like are given to you when by the vet when you're going to get the treatment, like, um, you know, as long as you do your best part, the chances of something fatal happening are unlikely. What I'm going to be doing is crate confining Dudley. I live in an apartment complex and I'm on the fifth floor and although we always take the elevator to go outside, I really am nervous about even taking him outside at all. So what I think I'm going to do is get wee wee pads and try to let him use the bathroom on our balcony because he does do that. He's just going to be in the crate for most of the time, um, if not all the time, because I'm just very paranoid and very nervous. There, there can be complications during the recovery period. It says that, you know, to follow up with your vet. Um, you know, excess coughing, coughing up blood, vomiting, anything like that. Um, I believe they give you medication for the dog's muscles because they can be really tender from the injection site. Depending on how dog, how severe your dog's heart disease is, is going to depend on how likely the chance of complications are. So for my case, very lucky that Dudley has no physical symptoms because his, he's most likely going to have a pretty smooth recovery. You know, it is really sad that you have to pretty much keep your dog in a crate for all this time. They don't get to play. They're not going to understand why. They're probably going to cry a lot, but it's kind of just like, you know, you got to keep playing your part and doing your best and just know that at the end of that time, once they're fully recovered and they're able to run around and, you know, their heart isn't being prevented from pumping properly by these worms anymore, then it'll all be worth it. They say, you know, with the two-step injection... After the first month of strict restriction of exercise, then you can gradually start to increase it. So within two months, they should be back to normal. So yeah, so I just wanted to share um, what my knowledge of, and this is from looking on, you know, the American Heartworm Association, several, several, several adoption shelter, um, other animal resource websites about heartworm treatment. But please, 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 if you have a dog, keep it on preventative. Um... Within six months to a year after the treatment, you're supposed to follow up and get a test for them again to make sure that it is negative. It can take up to six months for the test to come up negative, so they don't recommend you doing it before that time period because if it shows it's positive, they don't want you to freak out or anything. I am going to, I guess, give updates every, you know, weekly maybe to show, you know, after the injections what his behavior is like, if he's in any pain. Um, just to kind of like share what I'm experiencing throughout this process. And um, by the end of the 30 days of his recovery period, when he's able to start, you know, exercising better again, that'll kind of be the end of it. So today's April 9th, 2017. So by the time I finish this, it should be about the second week of May. Um, so yeah, but if you have any questions, comments, concerns, I really want to help people because... Um, I looked for, I tried to find some videos of dogs post heartworm treatment to see how people were handling it. You know, it's, it's kind of easier when you know somebody who's going through the same thing and you can hear it firsthand because the vets can tell you, you know, vets may have all different perspectives of things based on how the pets that they've treated have handled it. So, um, you know, it's easier to hear it firsthand from somebody who's actually had to put their pet through it. So, alrighty. I'll see you later. And there's my good boy. Soon to be heartworm free. Oh, the good boy. So I just dropped Dudley off at the shelter. Um, picking him up around 3 o'clock. It's about 8.30 right now. Um, they gave me a couple of sheets of paper and talking about the treatment and recovery and the medications they're going to be sending him home with post 
the injections to help with the pain and everything else. So, uh, yep, and we'll keep you updated. So Dudley's back from the first injection. Um, they said that he did fine, but they did have to give him a sedative because he was very anxious and nervous in the kennel. So he's extremely lethargic. He was standing and kind of like, just like his back legs started bending and he was sort of sitting down, breathing very, very steadily and slowly. After about five hours of sleeping, he's finally a little more coherent, but not by much. I'm giving him some water, I'm gonna feed him, and then I'm gonna give him medication that the vet sent me home with. Always recommend giving dogs medication and peanut butter because they love it and it makes them associate the pill bottles with something that tastes good. So it's the end of day two for Dudley's heartworm treatment. So he's officially done. He never has to go back to the shelter again. Um, if you can't tell from the last video that I took of him, he's obviously a lot more alert um, than he was after the first day. The sedative wore off a lot earlier today. He hasn't pooped in since that I know of since yesterday in the morning before the first injection. So my assumption is that the pain medication that they've been giving him and everything um, are making him constipated because I've taken him out a couple times, walking him really slow, making sure that he doesn't get too excited. Update, he seems to be feeling a bit better. He finally pooped this morning and just again a little while ago. Um, he finally resorted to going on the balcony um, the wee wee pad. He seems to be panting a little bit. I don't know if it's just because he's having a little bit more of a hard time breathing or what the case is. Maybe he's just in pain still because panting is a sign of pain, but, um, I'm expecting abnormal behavior for the first few days and if it continues after about a week, then I'll probably call the vet if I notice anything strange. But, you know, keep checking the gums as long as they're pink, the nose is wet, there's no fever or anything like that, then they're pretty much good. So, uh, check back later. So instead of calling the vet, I just did a ton of research online and apparently prednisone, since it's a steroid, um, makes dogs less tolerant of heat and they aren't able to regulate their temperature. So that's what causes the panting. So I'm going to assume that that's what it is. And as you know, you taper it off and their body starts to feel back to normal, they don't pant as much. Also, other common side effects that I'm reading that everybody else is having these problems is um, frequent thirst and a lot of peeing, which he has been doing. He's been waking me up in the middle of the night to go pee, which he normally doesn't do. And um, phenobarbital, as it is, makes him pee more as well. So being on the two, you can imagine how much of a nightmare it is. Dudley. Dudley. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, crazy.